I drank the Clipper Aid and it tasted good. Welcome back to part five of my video series on the Trudon 2.0. I didn't want to make this video, but you guys convinced me and honestly, I'm glad I did. Throughout my coverage of the Trudon 2.0, the most asked question has been, can this machine run Clipper? With a few exceptions, this printer is a Voron 2.4 equivalent, but with much less effort required to get it up and running. One of the major differentiating factors between these two machines is the firmware they're running. The Voron runs Clipper, while this Trudon comes stock with RepRap firmware. If you're not familiar, there are three primary flavors of 3D printer firmware, Marlin, RepRap, and Clipper, not including the manufacturer specific ones that we're not gonna focus on in this video. For the uninitiated, the firmware is like the consciousness of the printer. It's what allows it to think, respond to inputs, and take actions. While our 3D printers aren't sentient, yet, they do have different personalities. When asked the same question, they have different ways of delivering the answer. And how they get to that answer depends on their thought process. They all speak G-code, but they have different dialects. There are commonalities, but also distinguishing factors. Most of the core functionality is the same between printer firmwares. Where they differ is in how they handle things like acceleration, nozzle pressure equalization, and vibration compensation, to name a few. Each firmware has their own implementation of these features with different underlying algorithms. One of the other significant differentiating factors is the supported hardware. Not every firmware can run on every printer. RepRap can only be run on 32-bit boards, such as those manufactured by Duet 3D. Whereas Marlin is compatible with nearly every printer, including those with 8-bit boards. Clipper, on the other hand, can run on most boards, but leans on an external microcontroller, like a Raspberry Pi, to do the heavy computational lifting. So which firmware is the best, and why? Well, that depends on your criteria. RepRap has been around the longest, but Marlin is the most widely used. Clipper, a relative newcomer, is the most hyped. Nowadays, at least. All three of these firmwares is open source, with Marlin and Clipper being maintained by independent developers. RepRap firmware has origins in the RepRap movement, pioneered by Dr. Adrian Boyer. Active development is primarily carried out by Duet 3D a commercial company that develops 3D printer controller boards. A fork of this firmware, which adds compatibility for STM32 based boards, is maintained by a group called Team Gloomy. This is the subset of RepRap firmware that runs on the Trudon 2.0 and its Octopus X7 control board with an STM32 based chip. So now let's focus on Clipper versus RepRap. Why might you prefer one over the other? And if you already own or plan on acquiring a Trudon 2.0, which should you use? Well, as I mentioned, this printer comes stock with RepRap, a departure from the recommendation given by Voron Design. But that doesn't mean that it's bad firmware or that you need to upgrade it. All too often, people get swept up into the upgrade mindset, a mentality of feeling that they need to upgrade their printers incessantly and without cause. And oftentimes they are worse off for it especially when they don't fully comprehend the intention behind a particular change. It's my opinion that the firmware this printer ships with is perfectly capable, and most of you will be happy with its capabilities. It has pressure advance and input shaping, two of the most sought after features in Clipper firmware. With a little tuning, it can print well out of the box without needing to make any fundamental changes to how it operates. So if you just want a machine that can produce good quality parts, you can stop here. However, I know many of you will not be satisfied with that answer. And frankly, Clipper does excel in a variety of ways that may justify the switch for you. For one, Clipper's implementation of input shaping is far more sophisticated. I also personally prefer the way Clipper handles macros and general firmware configuration. After switching to Clipper, you'll also have the ability to connect a USB webcam for remote monitoring, which is just a value added feature. So in the coming minutes, I will equip you with the knowledge and information required to switch this printer over to Clipper. While this video is primarily focused on the Trudon 2.0, most of this information applies generally and can be translated to other printers. I'm about to get into the nitty gritty details of how to do this. So if you already know how to build and deploy a Clipper configuration, or you don't care to learn, you can skip ahead to this time code, at which time I'll show you just the essentials for the conversion. 
So as mentioned, Clipper requires a dedicated computer or microcontroller to operate. The Raspberry Pi is a popular choice and is what I'll be using in this video. It's worth noting that these things aren't cheap. And while there are other more affordable alternatives, if cost is sensitive, you may want to consider just sticking with the stock firmware. I'd like to thank my friend Tim from Intrepid Dawn Studios for sending me a Pi to use for this process. The first thing we're going to do is download the Raspberry Pi imager and insert a blank SD card into our computer. The Pi imager has built-in images for many popular operating systems, including those required to run Clipper. Clipper has a few different options for the front-end web host software, namely Mainsail, Fluid, and Octoprint. I'll be opting to use Mainsail as it's what I'm familiar with. You'll want to take this opportunity to configure your network. Then, with the SD card flashed, ejected, and inserted into the Pi, you'll be able to open a web browser and navigate to the hostname path you specified during setup in the Pi imager. And this will load the mainsail interface. The second step in the process is to generate the firmware binary that you'll be using to flash the firmware to the printer's main control board. This will require you to open a terminal window and SSH into the Pi. If you're not familiar, SSH stands for Secure Shell, which is a means of remotely communicating with a device on your network. You'll then need to issue a sequence of commands to build the firmware binary. The Make Menu Config command will open an interface with some configurable parameters. This is where you'll specify the architecture and processor model of the MCU on the printer's motherboard. Typically, you could read the documentation from the manufacturer to determine the make and model of the MCU, but with the Trudon 2.0 being so new, that information wasn't readily available. So I needed to open up the printer and have a look around. After removing a heatsink, I was able to identify the MCU as an STFM32407. Back in the terminal, I inputted this information and ran the make command to complete the process. We then need to rename the generated file to firmware.bin and use SFTP or Secure File Transfer Protocol to get the file off the Pi and onto our local machine. We then need a second SD card onto which we'll load the firmware. For this purpose, we can reuse the existing SD card that ships with the printer. I'd suggest making a backup of the RepRap file system before reformatting the card. If you chose to skip the nitty gritty details, you can download the firmware binary I have pre-compiled for this printer from the link in the description. We'll then insert the SD card into the printer and power it up. After a few seconds, the firmware file will be flashed to the board. We can then return to mainsail and complete the setup. The majority of the configuration for Clipper is done within a single printer config file. This is the equivalent of config.g in RepRap. The definitions in this file will tell Clipper everything it needs to know about the specifics of our printer. It's here that we'll specify the build volume, maximum speeds and accelerations, the thermistor types, the fan arrangement, and, well, pretty much everything else. We can also define some useful macros at the bottom of this file that we can call from within mainsail or directly in our slicer of choice. If you'd again like to skip the details, you can simply download the printer config file from the link in the description. Upload it to mainsail and you'll be off and printing. If you're interested in learning how I created this configuration, stick with me. If you're configuring Clipper yourself, it's best to start with a configuration for a similar machine. Fortunately, since this printer is so similar to the Voron 2.4, that will be a great starting point. The Voron configuration we'll be using is set up for the Big Tree Tech Octopus, and not the Octopus X7 as in the Trudon 2.0. So we'll need to change all of the pin definitions within the file. For this process, I referred to the pinout diagram provided by Formbot, coming through the config and replacing the pin definitions one by one. With the first pass complete, I restarted the firmware to see if it would work. I immediately noticed that the case light didn't turn on, and when I attempted to home the axes, they moved in the wrong direction. After inverting a few of the pins and making a few other adjustments, I rebooted the printer again and re-verified the operation of the core functionality and the various peripherals. Much to my delight, everything was working as expected. I then added some useful macros to automate certain functions such as nozzle wiping and priming, as well as filament loading and unloading. Finally, I was ready for my first print. The print looked good, but as expected, the ringing was back in full force. Before we switched to Clipper, we had just completed the input shaping process in RepRap firmware. But now that we have new firmware, we are back to square one. 
So in the next video, I will illustrate how to do input shaping in this new firmware. And while you may be familiar with this process on other Clipper-based machines, it's gonna be a little bit different on this one. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, please do subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. And I wanna say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who have already joined me and are supporting the production of these videos. If you're interested in joining us on Patreon, we have lots of great content waiting there for you. We have supplemental resources for the Trudon 2.0, as well as a catalog of high quality 3D printable models that are optimized for sale. So if you wanna start a business with 3D printing and you wanna get up and running quicker, that is the source for great models and great insights from a full-time 3D printing entrepreneur. I'm Taylor, this is YGK3D. And until next time, happy printing.